And welcome to Holy Family. Our gathering song is Be Still My Soul. Now, before I begin this evening, I want to, um, to welcome you to our very unusual reconciliation service in preparation for Christmas. Um, as I look down at a totally empty church, I'm very aware of this time last year when many, many of you were here and we had a beautiful um, ceremony. But I am very consoled by the fact that I am here with, with my best friend, with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And I want you to con concentrate as we go uh, through the reconciliation service this evening. I really want you to concentrate on the host and on Jesus really and truly present here. And although you are not here physically, it's much more important that you be here in spirit. And whatever about the wonders of technology, Jesus knows you're, you're taking part in a reconciliation service this evening, and he can see you. So, I'm going to ask the, um, in a couple of moments when I leave here and go over to the pulpit, I'm going to um, 
ask our, our video team to really um, concentrate, focus the camera on the, on the monstrance and on the presence of Jesus here, even while I'm talking, so that he is the focal point of our ceremony this evening. And whatever few words I say, uh, hopefully I'll be talking on beha his behalf, because I'm depending on him to put whatever words I say into my heart. So let's, let's, if you are at home now, let's kneel and we'll begin with an opening prayer. So Jesus, once again, we begin this evening our little reconciliation service by, by thanking you, thanking you, Jesus, for being here with us. You are always with us every moment of our lives, and you never for a moment forsake us and let us down. And we've come this evening to ask your forgiveness for the times that we have forsaken you or let you down. And so we ask you to forgive us for those times. You always welcome those who are sinners, especially those who were prepared to admit that they were sinners. The people you had no time for were those who were not prepared to admit that they had done anything wrong. And so, almighty and merciful God, as we kneel here before you this evening, you have brought us together in your name to receive your mercy and grace in our time of need. And indeed, Lord, as we kneel before you here this, this evening, we bring, you, bring before you all those who are suffering at the moment. It's very sad when we look at the news and see the overstretched hospitals trying to cope with the number of people who are ill, people brokenhearted, having lost a loved one, having lost a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a grandmother, or a child. And we ask you, Lord, to be with those suffering ones this, this evening, and for those in hospital and suffering with the COVID-19, we ask you, Lord, to be their source and their strength. We most of all ask you to be with the medical professionals and all who are working in the front lines, wonderful people and great people, dedicated people. We, Lord, we admire them and we praise them, and we ask you to give them every grace and every blessing that they need. Take our, open our eyes, Lord, to see the, the way we have taken things for granted, the wrong we have done. Touch our hearts and convert us to yourself, where sin has divided and scattered, and how often that has happened recently, recently, Lord, where we have given in to anger or condemnation. Forgive us, Lord. May your love make us one again. Where sin has brought weakness, may your power heal and strengthen. Where sin has brought the death, may your spirit raise us to new life. Create in us, Lord, a new heart to love you, so that our lives may be a reflection of you. As Christians, Lord, we are called to be witnesses for you. And we are witnesses for you when we act in love at all times. And so, Lord, we ask you this evening to fill our hearts with that love. May the world see the glory of God revealed in each one of us as we go about our everyday activities. And through us, may they come to know that you are the one 
that, that you, Christ, are the one who has been sent to save us and look after us and to show us the way. May your holy name be praised and blessed forever. Now you just, if you want to be seated, um, but concentrate on the real presence um, as I go over here. I want to begin uh, with a reading from, from the Gospel. It's from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, and it's the healing of the, of the paralytic. One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence, but not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles in the middle in front of Jesus. When he saw their fate, he says, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, who is this who speaks blasphemy? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which it's easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picking up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. Then astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God. And struck with awe, they said, we have seen incredible things today. And indeed, believe me when I tell you that Jesus does incredible things every day of our lives. So why did I choose that particular reading from, from, the, from the gospel this evening, the healing of the paralytic? Simply because it gives us an idea of what sin does to us, the effect it has in our lives. 
And just like that man lying on the stretcher, it paralyzes us. We see, it's good for us to see that sin is not simply, as we often think, something we do. It is something that we are. That's very true for so many of us and so many people. Sin, sin is, is the dis, distorted personalities people are trapped in. Sin is often the illusionary and false lives that people live and the twist of, twisted motives that drive them on because nobody has ever really maybe taught them the truth and meaning or meaning. So they live at a very low, you might call, spiritual subsistence. They are like that man in the gospel this evening. They are par paralyzed. You know, it can affect families in, in so many different ways. Very often, the only way some families are capable, capable of relating is more or less by putting one another down. And that's the normal way in some households. And I ask you this evening, is that how Jesus wants us, wants us to live? Very often, uh, when I had the opportunity of visiting homes and visiting families, um, and especially I noticed that when I was working in the UK, how young people treated their parents uh, by being, uh, you know, not very nice towards them. I was always, always hurt by sometimes the way wives treated their husbands or husbands treated their wives in the things they, they said. There was no closeness between them. And that's why today I always love being with people who are in love. People who are in love. And I also, one of the good things that has come from the COVID-19, if we can say that, is that Nowadays, what's happening is um, people are calling up and, and making appointments to come and have their confession heard. And so, different from having confessions on a Saturday afternoon and a line of people, there's no, there's no rush. And, and, you know, very often I felt that confession it had almost lost its meaning. Um, reconciliation, you know, it's a real look at your life and where you are. And I noticed in the last uh, few months or since the pandemic began, that people now come and they really, really tell you how they feel in their soul. And they bear their soul, maybe for the first time in their lives. And very often, they will finish up by saying, well, this has been wonderful. I feel, I feel I've made the best confession I've ever had in my life. So many good things. I, I'm a great believer in that, that many good things will co come out of this, believe, believe me, out of the pandemic. So don't, don't for one moment lose hope. Is there a way you and I can overcome our temptations and, and the failings that we have? Well, having laws and having rules is not going, is not going to help us. Because how often you feel or how you react I meant to say, when somebody says to you, you should do this, or you should do that, nobody likes being told what to do. And I often say to people, 
I never should on myself, and I never should on anybody else. Try and turn all your shoulds into I want to. I, I want to. Now, the surest way, and the only way really, of dealing with our faults and with our failings, whether they be small or big, is to realize more and more and more and more every day God's love for us. When I realize that God loves me as I am, and I ask God every day to help me to believe that more and more in my life, then the more I believe that, that I am absolutely loved by God every moment of, of my life, then I'm much less likely to offend him. Even in, in, in human relationships, if you are really, really, absolutely sure of the love of your wife or your husband or whoever it is for you, and that they will never let you down, you're not going to offend that person, are you? You're not going to hurt them, hmm? I don't think so. And so the same way with us and God. When you become convinced of God's love, absolute love, then you're much more likely to do the things that he wants you to do, to try and live. Okay, we're weak, and at times we fail. That's human, that's being human, that's being human. But you know, and I know, that we can always come, come back to him that you're looking at at the moment and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry and ask you to forgive me. That's all you have to do. And you know that he never ever refuses to forgive us. No matter how often we fail or no matter how often we seek forgiveness. And that's the beauty, absolute beauty of reconciliation and of our relationship with God. He is an all-loving, all-forgiving, and all-merciful God. And I never want you to forget that. So please keep that in mind. I know a lot of people at the moment worry that they have not got the opportunity of coming to confession. But here, here are the facts. God knows if you at, at the moment are listening to me here this evening, and I know that this is what Jesus would want me to say to, to you. I know how you feel at the moment Jesus is saying to you. And if you're genuinely sorry for what you have done or whatever it is, and until you get an opportunity to come to confession, you will be for forgiven. God always forgives us. And later on, uh, we'll make in front of, of Jesus here, we'll make a beautiful act of contrition, really an act of contrition from the heart. It must be from the heart. From the lips is not going to do it. It must be from the heart. That's what matters. And if you do that, um, God will un understand. I often say to people who um, worry about uh, coming to confession, um, talking to somebody the other day who caught up and they very much wanted to come to confession, but then one of their family um, uh, came home sick and uh, possibly has a coronavirus, and very um, considerately, they phoned up and said, I better not come because uh, one of our family is not well at the moment and possibly has the COVID-19. That person sins if they were to anything happen to them tonight or tomorrow. God is not going to hold that against them because they had the intention. They had the intention. Just like each morning at Mass when we say the beautiful uh, spiritual communion prayer, you receive, you receive 
communion through your intention. It's always the intention that counts, because you could be in the church and walk up and receive communion and not give it another thought. And that's not a way to welcome Jesus, but it's the intention in your heart, and that's what really matters. So hopefully, uh, next year, uh, we'll all be back again, and uh, it'll be a totally different reconciliation. But uh, we're doing the best we can at, at the moment, and I hope you accept that. So I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to kneel in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and um, we'll um, do some, we, we'll seek for forgiveness, and uh, we we'll make an act of contrition. And then before we finish, I'll take the monstrance, and I'll bless each and every one of you at home who's uh, t tuned in to our reconciliation service this evening. And I'll ask him and pray to give you whatever blessings you need at the moment, and, al and also to give you uh, the blessing of, of forgiveness and healing in body, soul, and spirit. So at home now, uh, wherever you are, if you can maybe kneel, as we kneel here before the Blessed Sacrament, and um, conscious now of our faults and failings, we once again come before our loving and compassionate Father. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of um, being here this evening once, once again. and. Um, and giving us the opportunity to come before you just as we are, not perfect, but nevertheless here wanting to be forgiven. And so I'll do a little litany now, and at the end of each of the little prayers, if you can say after me, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we have sinned against you, the only true God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we have sinned against thee, the holiness of your name. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive us for not worshiping you as you have asked us to. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we have failed, maybe as parents, maybe as children, maybe as, as whoever we are or in, in our work or in our love for one another. We ask your forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive our anger and make us gentle and humble, just like you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, heal our turbulent sexuality and forgive our sinful indulgences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive our sinful desires for material things, never being satisfied with what we have and always wanting more and more. Lord, have mercy. Lord, feel, heal my, my, the times when I've been unkind or unchar uncharitable in my speech or in the way that I treat people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, for the times that I've been unfair or unjust in any way, for the many times, Lord, that I've not really listened to those who just wanted to be listened to, to, to be understood, Lord, have mercy. 
And now we turn to our Lord and we recite that beautiful prayer that you give us, Jesus, especially the part where we ask you to forgive us as we have forgiven those who have sinned against you. So, Lord, if any of us this evening hold any bitterness or resentment against anybody, now, Lord, we come before you and we ask you to forgive that person or those people. Remove, Lord, all resentment, all bitterness from us and give us the grace of forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. And now we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You can join with me now in the Confitio. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Now, you may notice that they will put an act of contrition up on the screen uh, for you at home to recite. And you can join with me now as we make a very, very sincere act of contrition here in front of Jesus. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do Good, I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend, with your help, to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, suffered and died for us. You, Jesus, suffered and died for us. In your name, my God, have mercy. And thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. A loving and merciful Father, you have called us to share in the priesthood of your Son. We are all called to be part of that priesthood. Look on us this evening with mercy and love and cleanse us of our sins. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and renew us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, you never abandon the sinner, but seek the lost with mercy and love. Look upon your crucified Son and the price he paid for our salvation. Free us from our many sins, and by your grace, help us to sin no more. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if you remain kneeling, um, I'll bless you with the blessed sacrament. So you concentrate now on, on the Eucharist, on the Blessed Sacrament, and, and uh, 
I pray for you. So Lord, I ask you in a very special way tonight to look upon those looking in at the moment. Look into their hearts, Lord, and heal their hearts. Heal them, Lord, in body, in mind, and spirit. Be with them, Lord, as they go through this pandemic and these difficult times. Keep them safe, Lord. For those families looking in at the moment, I ask the Lord to keep you close to one another and close to him. We bring before you, Lord, this evening, those in hospital, those suffering at the moment. We bring you before you, Lord, this evening, those who have recently been being bereaved and are lonely and feeling isolated and lost at the moment. We ask you, Lord, to be their comfort and to be their strength. And I ask you, Lord, very especially, to help each one of us to become more and more aware of your love for us each and every moment of our lives. That we need more than anything else in the whole world. And Lord, I ask you now to be with us in what we're trying to do and trying to survive at the moment and help us to be safe and to, and to look after everybody else by keeping them safe also. And in your name now, Lord, I bless, ask you to bless each one watching in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And God bless you now and keep safe and have and enjoy the rest of the evening. Amen. And now we'll have um, our final hymn.